Hello and welcome to the House Geeks Real Estate Show, where you'll learn the smarter way to buy and sell homes. Today's show is going to be on our book, The Smart Home Buyer 2.0, which has a few additions from our first go around. Um, 25% longer. 10 extra pages, 10 did extra you say? pages, yes. So why not hang out with us for the next few minutes and be a house geek with us? Um, we do have a class coming up tomorrow, Wednesday the 29th at 6.30 at the Rosetown American Legion, which you can imagine is in Roseville, Minnesota. It's at, uh, it'll be at 6.30. Come hang out with us and learn the smarter way to buy and sell homes. Remember to check out our webpage and our YouTube page to dive deeper into these real estate related topics. I just looked and our YouTube page is up to 103 videos now. We've crossed the mark. Crossed the hundred mark. But yeah, yeah if you you'd like a copy of the book, you know, just uh, comment in the comment section below and we'll send you a copy. Yeah, I actually, um, I put uh, a link to the class tomorrow is in the live feed and also have uh, the, uh, you can send an email uh, when we will send you a copy of the book. Very okay. good. All right. I think we are good there. And try to get a little better angle. Get my good side for, for radio. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking of buying or selling a house? Or just want to know what might be going on with one of your biggest investments? Then why not become a house geek? Hi, I'm Kirk Duckwall here with Chad Vandalot, and we are the House Geeks. And we'd like to welcome you to the House Geeks Real Estate Show, where you can spend the next few minutes learning the smarter way to buy and sell homes or just know what's going on with the market. We are brought to you by Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preby with Bell Mortgage, and James Tolson with Country Financial. If you have any questions for us, give us a call at 612-207-5388. Again, 612-207-5388. Make sure you check us out online at housegeeks.com for the latest and greatest searching and researching tools. Also, check out our uh, YouTube page for over 100 videos diving into real estate uh, and what's going on here in the Twin Cities market and, and just yeah, all sorts of different uh, tidbits that you can grab from as you're preparing to buy or sell a house. So um, we've talked about on this show um, the book that we put together uh, a, a while back, and we have now just released our, our uh, the Smart Home Buyer Guide, um, Guide Through Your Biggest Financial Transaction 2.0. Uh, so we've added uh, 10 additional pages here and really think uh, filled in some, some areas that the first version didn't cover. And we're going to kind of go through um, some of those highlighted points uh, from the book and how we think it can be beneficial to anybody looking at buying a home. And if you're thinking about selling a house, this information is good to know because this is the way that, you know, you may be being approached by um, buyers and just good information. You All know, right, good if, point. if you don't under fully understand exactly how closing costs work, if you think sellers always pay the closing costs, here's a perfect reason why you should get a copy of this book. And then, like, like I said, um, this book is at no cost. If you email us at uh, contact at housegeeks.com, we will send out a copy to you at, at no cost. You know, the, the radio show, the videos, now the book, this is all something that we do to just try to help people out. And so if you'd like a copy of this book and, and uh, like a little guidance in this process and, and how to just really approach buying a home the smartest possible way. And it goes beyond that. If you go through these steps and you follow this, you could save tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of your, your home ownership um, and your purchase as well. So 
Um, yeah, kind of diving in. So, so one of the first things that we added was the two ways to buy a home. So we, we introed, let me just mute my computer hmm. here. There we go. I think that'll do it. <laughs> Always remember to mute the cell phones, and now I forget to mute the computer. Um, so, yeah, the, the two ways to approach buying a home. Um, it, it, mm, this is something that we discuss in our class, and that's the shotgun approach versus the surgical approach. And sadly enough, I would say probably 80% maybe 90% of people approach buying a home the shotgun way. Um, and the, the sad thing is, is that usually ends poorly. Now, people will learn over time. You do this enough times, you'll start to kind of correct that a little bit, but that can be many transactions and tens of thousands of lost potential dollars. I think what's perpetuating this is the digital technology that's out there now. You don't have to engage with a professional until pretty far down the road because you can view homes online, you can view rates online, they have rate calculators, some of which may be accurate, some of which may not, but it's not until you find one that you really, really like and that kind of pro propels a person to go out and seek advice. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like throwing somebody into a courtroom without any preparing for what's about to happen it's like up oh, here's your lawyer okay go at it right this is right. your case you know yeah it, it it is the technology because before you had to engage it typically a professional relatively early on um and start those conversations um and so yeah the shotgun approach it's, it's really just going to end in in three different ways all typically not the greatest um versus the surgical approach, which, you know, will end well. You're going to be confident that you got the right place. You know it's going to be the right place because you took the time to learn everything about what you're about to do and about the house and about the locations and all of that and what works for you doing that priority checklist. Another section that we added was set yourself up for success. Don't be in a rush. Top That's a big one. Yeah. Top five home buyer mistakes happen because people rush. If you rush this, you're going to mess it up. I mean, that's typically, I mean, we see it all the time. Uh, of people that either are attending the class or coming and reaching out to us, uh, you know, have appro maybe approached this in the past and they rushed into this process. And rushing basically walks you right back into that shotgun approach. <laughs> um, you know, this gets very costly. And the same is true for if you are a, a seller out there as well. If you try to rush getting your home to market and, and skip some of the most important steps, it's, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Just as if you rush into buying a home, it's going to cost you a lot of money typically or a lot of heartache or stress, whatever. And this applies to mortgages as well. You know, you have these online pre-approvals now where you can get pre-approved very quickly, um, but it does help to talk to a couple different people and uh, learn about a couple different products. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty frustrating to a buyer to get out there and get a, you know, fast pre-approval where you know, no income or assets were ever verified, and they're sitting there making the, you know, assumption that, um, you know, they can move forward, and, and then lo and behold, they go to make an offer and ask, ask to have the numbers ran, and it doesn't work, you know, or, or even worse, you get to the point of making an offer, you've locked in the property, maybe even paid for an inspection, paid for an appraisal, and it doesn't work. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is where it becomes very costly. So taking the time, um, it, it's, it's important. Um, so don't rush yourself into this, this process. Um, you know, we always talk about who you should see first, whether you should see a loan officer first or see a real estate agent first. And the honest answer is see both at the same time. Um, or if, if you, you know, you, you have that conversation going with a real estate agent, jump right into the, the property type um, and condition and stuff like that as to what you're thinking about looking at because that will affect the loan. When you do an online pre-approval, I bet you the box doesn't say 
Are you looking for a fixer upper or looking for a home that's move in ready? However, are you looking for a condo? Are you looking for a condo versus townhouse? What areas are you looking in? What income level um, based on the area to see what programs you qualify for? I mean, what they're doing is they're feeding this 80%, this 80% of people that want and feel the need to go about at it the shotgun way, that's what these online approvals are there for. They're, t you know, what is it? If there's a, a sucker born, there's a sucker born every minute and two to take advantage of them. Ah. Something like that, I think is the phrase. You know, that's what they're doing. They, they see that people, oh, let's fill out the online app. Let's, let's do this. They're never asking the important questions. So, um, we have a breakdown in the book of all the questions, the things that you're going to want to talk to um, as you are kind of beginning this process. Um, yeah, the loan is a big place where a person can save money. And uh, <clears throat> if there was the best loan out there, there would be only one loan. Well, and for that shotgun approach, they just want to throw the two easiest. You know, you know your FHA 30-year, your conventional 30-year. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you know, this person doesn't qualify conventional this much. Let's just say they're 20% down, even if they can't. And, th and that's one of the things I've seen happen. Have you ever gotten a pre-approval where, oh, yep, I have my pre-approval. Okay, well, this says you're doing 20% down. <gasps> I don't have 20% down. Yes. Right? Right? So they approved you for a loan you can't even do. So, uh, you know, it's. <laughs> and maybe there was maybe the reason that was is there wasn't a discussion about closing costs, which is our next topic here. Well, we have one minute to go. I suppose we can talk about closing costs. <laughs> now, closing costs. I mean, in 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 the breakdown that we give in the book is a clear description, and and, and sadly enough that you know once again you know pr ninety percent of agents or loan officers do a terrible job of explaining closing costs and how they truly work and how they truly impact you as a buyer and how sellers see that um, because that is very important to know because if you want to know how to get your offer accepted you need to understand this um, so there's a lot of people out there that you know just throw their shotgun offers out there and they, they, they lose out because they don't have a, a good grasp on that so we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to get into kind of the more in-depth part of the process. So, yeah, we'll be right back. You were kind of under fire. Hi, Serena. <laughs> you were kind of under fire there with the closing costs in one minute. I was. I didn't. Why? Where did I miss closing costs? Oh, I flipped it to section two. Oh, there it is. That's why I didn't see it. That's okay. You're listening to House Geeks Real Estate Show on AM 950. Today we're talking about our new book, The Smart Home Buyer, a guide through your biggest financial transaction or financial decision 2.0. Uh, kind of covering some of the things that we've added to this and, and, and highlighting some of the most important pieces in that. And we're happy to send anybody who's interested a free copy of this. Just email us at House contact at housegeeks.com. Again, that's contact at housegeeks.com. If you are thinking of buying or selling a house and would like some help or have some questions, please feel free to give us a call anytime at 612-207-5388. Again, 612-207-5388. And it doesn't need to be anything immediate. We have some listeners out there that reach out to us a year to two years in advance, and we're always happy to help answer questions, help them out, because this getting ready for this process, I mean, heck, if I was about to deal with a few hundred thousand dollars, I would take my time, too. <laughs> As we talked about, one of the biggest mistakes both a buyer and seller can make is to rush this process. Taking your time is a good thing. Um, so who represents you? This is a, a, a great little section. When we added some pieces to this, you know, uh, 
your representative, that, that's the key to understand that. Your representative is your advocate when you're out there. You know, an experienced home buyer um, or seller out there has, has sold three or four homes, okay? An experienced agent probably did that last month. <laughs> so utilize that, okay? They are doing it all the time. And this process is changing. If it's been five years, 10 years, 20 years, there's so much that has changed. I mean, I've been doing this for over a decade, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of homes um, sold, and I've seen this process change on a monthly basis. Yeah, and where we're located in the uh, upper Midwest here, seasonal changes are bound to happen as well. Yeah, knowing the market. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and timing the market. We were actually just talking about two of the slowest months you can sell a house here in the Twin Cities. Um, and so, yeah, having a good understanding, and, and that can be a good time to capture potentially good buys out there. So, you know, when you're looking for a representative, make sure you're looking for somebody that has that experience. You know, uh, you know, I understand maybe you have a relative that just got their license. That's great. I would hope they are working with somebody side by side as they're about to sell your multi hundred thousand or help you purchase a multi hundred thousand dollar property. So, you know, it's good to to um, help out your family members, but also make sure that they have the experience behind them because, you know, things can go wrong, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, and you want to make sure, you know, you have a good advocate there for you. Um. You know, we talked a little bit about, you know, what loan works best. And, you know, the, the, you said that there would be just one loan. Um, you know, another piece to this pie is is shopping for it. And everything that we've been taught shopping-wise, and this goes to what we were saying in the last section, the shotgun. These, a lot of these advertising companies are, are looking for that shotgun buyer, right? who thinks that rates is absolutely the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not, because if you do not understand how the order of how a lender analyzes your rate, then you are trying to go to the end. You're putting the cart before the horse. Now, the banks want you to believe that. Or a lot of them do, I should say. Good lenders, no. They'll walk you through this process and they'll show mm-hmm. you. But, you know, we, we break down in the book the order that you should be shopping for a mortgage in. Because each one of those things that's listed there will de- help determine what your rate is. And so if you're just going right to rate and you don't know these questions, then you are cart before the horse. Yeah, you can have a, you can have a lower interest rate than your neighbor, but your neighbor who has the same price on their house, can have a lower mortgage payment depending on how their mortgage is structured. Right. Yeah, and and so is it rate that's most important to you? Is it payment that's most important to you? Is it interest paid that is most important to you? Now, that one, that one's truly important to me, (laughs) right? Because that's the charge above and beyond, right? The, The cost of the home. Um, and that is where you can really, really save the most money in your purchase um, it is, is looking at how to adjust the overall interest being paid. Um, and there's a couple ways of doing that. Right. Uh, so the uh, once again, if you're interested in a copy of this book, um, if you're watching us on Facebook, you can just type in below. If you are uh, hearing this over the air, you know, just send us an email, contact at housegeeks.com. Happy to send it to you. It's a free book. Um, we'll just shoot that out and hopefully helps you with the process a little bit. Um, how about home buyer priority checklist? Mm-hmm. This is probably, once you step outside of getting your mortgage, Hands down, the most important thing a buyer can do, um, and me- even more important for your second and third time home buyers, um, because now you have a much better idea of what you really want. Otherwise, why would you move? Mm-hmm. You know, usually your second and third time buyer, they're going to be the one that takes far longer than a first time home buyer. You know, this process can last a year, two, three years. Um, what's fun is if you do it right, it's like a lot of people go, oh, that's daunting. That's a long time to be looking for a house. Do it right. Maybe you only go look at 10 houses. 
It's just you have narrowed down what you want. So is it about doing it quickly or is it about getting what you want, right? And when you have a house already, you tend to have a little more time on your hands. I think I've shown a client of yours that falls into that category where they said they've been working with you for about two years mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, she walked into the house and she knew pretty quickly that it wasn't the one for her. Right. Yeah, and, and, and so it's, it's, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. That kind of discipline in the home searching process, that's what you want. You said, that's how you find the deal. That's how you find the one you truly want. And it goes back to that don't be in a rush, right? So take, taking the time, um, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's just done right away. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the, the home buyer priority checklist, we call this the fight starter, okay? Because if you are buying with a significant other, this is a tough conversation. We know that because we've been doing this for a while. Um, yeah, we've done it ourselves, too. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it, it is a, it's a conversation that a lot of couples don't want to have. And they know they are different in, in spots. But what's going to happen is, is that difference in the search is going to result in not finding a home. That is going to uh, result in fight after fight after fight. Or you can just do the checklist right away, hash it out right away, and put yourself in a much better position by doing that priority checklist. Um, and, and what's great is you, you can go from the, we looked at 50 homes and couldn't find anything to we looked at five to 10 and found our dream house. But maybe you looked at 50 online or maybe you looked at more than 50 online. <laughs> right. right, exactly. And, and that's fine. That's if you're doing this the right way, if that's what you're doing, you know, you're utilizing these tools that we talked about that could be a hindrance mm -hmm. in the beginning as to how to use them to your advantage. Um, and but that's what you don't want to do is picture click. Yes. That's the wrong way to look at them online. Pictures can tell a thousand lies and can make a good house look bad and a bad house look good. And it, it doesn't give you, if you just click through quickly, it doesn't give you a good reference of layout as well, which, tends to, which is in the home priority checklist and tends to be pretty significant when selecting a home. Yeah, I mean, th the two go hand in hand. And I'm really getting a good understanding of layout. That's one of the first things when we meet up with a buyer is to do a layout tour. Basically, go hit a bunch of different layouts and take the ones off their list. I have heard probably 95% of the time, oh, we're open to anything, which is a complete lie, right? Because you go out and you start looking at these different homes, and they're like, nope, don't like this one. Nope, mm -hmm. don't like this one. Why? Well, I don't like I don't like the steep staircase and the headroom upstairs. Okay, so you don't like story and halves. Well, no, I'm not saying that. No, actually, you are, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to understand, and it's okay to take them off your list. It, just like a pickup truck from one company to another is going to be similar if you don't want a vehicle with a box on the back, maybe pickup trucks aren't right for you. So putting those two together, that can, that can help your process a lot. Wow, this show went quick. We have a <laughs> lot more that we could cover that's in this book, but we'd like to get it out to everybody. Um, like I say, there's no cost to it. Um, shoot us an email. Send us a message. We'll, we'll shoot you out a copy. Uh, it's just at uh, contact at housegeeks.com. If you do have any questions for us after the show, you can give us a call at 612-207-5388. Again, 612-207-5388. Follow us at housegeeks.com uh, for the latest and greatest searching and researching tools and updated videos. Well, another good show, Chad. Yep. Let's come back next week. All right. <laughs>